electrosurgery, hemostasis. Hemostasis is a process of formation of blood clot and subsequent stopping of bleeding. Electrosurgery. Electrosurgery is the application of electrical current to biological tissue. A complete circuit must exist for electrical energy to flow. Three basic system components are needed. A power unit, an active electrode and a dispersive or return electrode. Electrosurgery History Electrosurgery, the use of high-frequency electrical current for cutting and coagulation of tissue, has become a daily technique used in most surgical specialities. Heat of fire has been used as a crude method of hemostasis for over 5,000 years. One of the first applications of cautery involved heating an iron with fire and then touching hot iron to a wound to stop bleeding. Similarly, in 1875, electrical current was passed through wire loops until they were red hot and heat was transferred to the tissues by contact with the red hot wire. All of these early applications were examples of electrocautery, however not true electrosurgery. In electrocautery, heat is transferred to tissue from a preheated object. The current heats only the electrode and does not pass through the patient's body. True electrosurgery involves the cutting or coagulation of tissues by passing a high-frequency current through the target tissue. It was first practiced in 1924 by Dr. Harvey Cushing, a famous neurosurgeon. Cushing enlisted the help of William Bovey, a Harvard physicist, and ever since Bovey's name has become synonymous with electrosurgical units. Law of Operation The heating effects produced are central to the desired function of the electrosurgical instrument. The rate at which tissues are heated plays a crucial role in determining clinical effect. The amount of thermal energy delivered and the time rate of delivery will dictate the observed tissue effects. In general, below 45 degrees Celsius thermal damage to tissue is reversible. Once it exceeds 45 degrees Celsius, the proteins in the tissue become denatured, losing their structural integrity. Above 90 degrees Celsius, the liquid in the tissue evaporates, resulting in desiccation or vaporization depending on how the heat is transferred. At 200 degrees Celsius, the remaining solid components of the tissue are reduced to carbon. Uses and Applications Electrosurgical instruments are undoubtedly some of the most useful and most often used tools at the surgeon's disposal. But there are potential applications for which these instruments are not commonly used. For example, there is a pervasive dogma in surgery that skin is to be opened using the traditional scalpel and deeper tissues may then be opened using the electrosurgical tool. As discussed previously in cutting mode, the electrode rapidly heats cells to the point of vaporization. The excess heat is dispersed as commonly noted smoke and steam, but is not passed to the tissues adjacent to the incision site. So an electrosurgical incision is not a true cutting incision and this may further explain the lack of tissue char and minimal scarring on wound healing. Open cholecystectomy wounds carried deeper with electrosurgery had significantly faster incision times and significantly less incision blood loss as compared with those done with scalpel or laser with no significant difference in subjective or objective patient pain. How frequently it is applied? The use of electrosurgery during an operative procedure is almost as common as wearing gloves. There are various energy sources and methods employed with the use of electrosurgery. Radio frequency current is typically used by the surgeon to cut tissue, coagulate tissue to obtain hemostasis or fulgurate tissue. An electrosurgery device can deliver heat at a range of 100 degrees Celsius to 1200 degrees Celsius, delivered by interchangeable tips such as loop, needle and blade tips.
Electrosurgery is a safe and efficient instrument for both invasive and minimally invasive surgical procedures if basic safety measures are applied. Problems, Complications and Solutions Insulation Failure Continuous cleaning and sterilization results in formation of thin layer of insulation covering the shaft of active electrode. Undetectable tears are more dangerous than large cracks since the current escaping from these minuscule breaks is more concentrated and therefore capable of causing sparks averaging 700 degrees Celsius. These sparks can cause severe burns and even ignite fires, especially in oxygen-rich environment and other highly inflammable substances. Routine use of the high voltage coagulation current may actually compromise insulation integrity. The higher the voltage, the greater the risk that the current will break through weak insulation. Solution Usage of low voltage current is preferred. Electrosurgery equipment allows the use of coagulation or cutting waveform of current. Coagulation current is released in rapid high voltage bursts to desiccate tissue and cause hemostasis, while cutting current comes out in a lower voltage uninterrupted flow to dissect tissue. In most cases, cutting current for both cutting and coagulation should be used. Coagulation mode is really only necessary when the need to fulgurate or stop diffuse bleeding on highly vascularized tissue is needed. Using the lowest voltage may reduce the wear on the insulation and minimize the chance that the current can escape through hairline cracks. Cutting current minimizes the risk but does not eliminate the risk of insulation failure. Lower electrical impedance in gloves. The impedance of the glove barrier to the electrical current could be low enough for the current to pass through it. The impedance or resistance properties of a surgical glove may be reduced as a result of extended wear and exposure to blood and fluids or from perspiration inside the glove. There will be slow microscopic absorption of water into the latex film. The water molecular migration does not breach the glove barrier but such a glove that has become hydrated measures a lower electrical resistance than a non-hydrated glove. Solution Routine regloving and double gloving can prevent these problems. Capacitive coupling The phenomenon of capacitance is the ability of two conductors to transmit electrical flow even if they are separated by an intact layer of insulation. Capacitive coupling can occur even in the best case scenario, that is, when the insulation around the active electrode is intact and the tip of the electrode isn't touching anything metal. If the active insulated electrode is wrapped around a towel clamp or placed inside a metal trocar sleeve or comes in close contact with any conductive substance for an extended period of time, the current in the active electrode may induce a current in the second conductor. As long as the induced current can dissipate easily through a large surface of tissue, it will not present a problem. The danger occurs if the second conductor contains some insulating material, as in the case of a metal cannula held in place by a plastic anchor. The plastic anchor will prevent the energy from dissipating and increase the likelihood of a thermal burn. Burns from capacitance current may occur when the surface area is less than 3 cm square or the current density is approximately 7 watts per cm square. This will also occur when the user of the equipment reduces the contact surface of his grip to perhaps just the minimal fingertips. This will direct a high dissipation of electrical capacitance through that reduced area of glove barrier. Such a high capacitance may break down the non-conductive capacity of the glove. Solution As with direct coupling, the best way to prevent this phenomenon is to use the active electrode monitoring system that prevents current from capacitive coupling from building to dangerous levels. Avoiding all plastic metal hybrid instruments including cannulae, trocars and clamps when doing electrosurgery is advised.
a firm hold should be applied on the hemostat instrument to impact a larger contact area to avoid high capacitance over a small area of the glove. While the glove is an excellent electrical insulator and care is taken to ensure this, there are limitations and it is prudent to take certain measures to avoid incidences of such shocks and burns. A recommendation is to use double gloving or increased changing of gloves during electrosurgery procedures. AORN Recommendations AORN, which is a non-profit membership association of more than 160,000 perioperative nurses, recommends the use of a smoke evacuation system to protect preoperative personnel from inhaling the smoke generated during electrosurgery. AORN cites the potential for bacterial and viral contamination of the smoke and warns that gaseous byproducts can be toxic and mutagenic. According to AORN, following factors should be considered during electrosurgery. The patient's weight, fat distribution and age. Active implants such as pacemaker or ICD patient cleared by cardiology. The position of the return electrode and metal implants, patient position, operating site, scars and tattoos. According to AORN, surgeons should be aware of the following factors while performing electrosurgery. The ESU has had proper maintenance, is in good working order with proper accessories. The lowest power setting is being used. The alarms should not be silenced. The potential for injury due to direct or capacitive coupling. The correct accessories go with the correct machine. How to report events and near misses. The danger of activating the ESU while staffs are in direct contact with the patient. Special precautions with argon enhanced coagulation. Glove burns. When an electrode is activated too soon or a forcep is not in contact with the tissue, the current can actually develop strong heat that can penetrate both natural and synthetic latex gloves and cause burns to the surgeon's hands. Steps that should be taken to avoid painful glove burns are as follows. Check for proper connections of the electrodes and switches. Also check ESU setup avoiding cable loops. Use only the accessories manufactured for that particular ESU. Use insulated forceps. Apply active electrode to the tissue. During coagulation, apply forceps first and then activate. The integrity of the glove decreases with oils from the hands and contact with liquids. Change gloves regularly during electrosurgery. Conclusion Surgical gloves may be considered a non-conductor due to the insulating properties of rubber and may be considered by some to act as an insulation medium when performing electrosurgery. However, glove barriers are not manufactured for this purpose and therefore should not be relied upon to provide fail-safe insulation. Understanding how to ensure optimal protection and performance is crucial in healthcare now more than ever, particularly with the overshadowing problems related to blood-borne pathogenic diseases such as hepatitis and AIDS. Thus, we saw how electrosurgery has gained popularity in the healthcare profession for its cutting precision and effectiveness. But at the same time, it's important to keep in mind the significant precautions while using an electrosurgery device.